If pelvic serous carcinoma begins in the fimbriated end of the fallopian tube, how does this happen? In other words, what causes cancer in the fallopian tube? Let's begin by looking historically at what was believed to increase or decrease the risk of ovarian cancer, as this is a good place to start. Our textbooks and traditional training tells us that having used the oral contraceptive pill decreases a woman's risk of ovarian cancer. Having been pregnant also decreases her risk. These risks were linked to the concept of incessant ovulation. The theory being that the more times a woman ovulated in her lifetime resulted in more times the ovarian epithelium had to repair itself. We speculated that this incessant repair process made the ovarian epithelium susceptible to cancer. We now believe that the use of the oral contraceptive pill and a history of pregnancy decreases the risk of ovarian cancer via an altogether different mechanism. Knowing that the majority of pelvic serous carcinomas arise in the fimbriated end of the fallopian tube and not the ovarian epithelium was the first step in beginning to look for a causative factor. We believe that pelvic serous carcinomas arise from the fimbriated end of the fallopian tube as a result of exposure to inflammatory agents carried through the tube during retrograde menstruation. Inflammatory or infectious agents are carried from the vagina through the cervix and uterus and out the fimbriated end of the fallopian tube. The vast epithelial lining is bathed in these pro-inflammatory agents each month during a woman's reproductive life. The epithelial lining is subjected to serial episodes of inflammation and repair, and this is the more plausible explanation for the development of tubal intraepithelial changes. Now it makes sense why the oral contraceptive pill and pregnancy would lower the risk of ovarian cancer. The oral contraceptive pill causes thickening of the cervical mucus, which blocks ascending inflammation. It also decreases the duration and heaviness of each monthly cycle and decreases the motility of tubal cilia. Similarly, during pregnancy, the cervical mucus plug and developing pregnancy itself block ascending inflammation. Lactational amenorrhea following pregnancy also increases the number of menstrual free months in a woman's lifetime. In countries where women have more pregnancies and lactation continues for longer periods, their risk of ovarian cancer is lower. Historically, we also know that tubal ligation decreases the risk of ovarian cancer, and this knowledge never supported the theory of incessant ovulation. But now it makes perfect sense. Blocking the fallopian tube mechanically prevents inflammatory or infectious agents from reaching the fimbriated end of the fallopian tube. 